How's it going YouTube? Got 4th Star TCG back again. No script, no green screen, giving it to you straight. Straight facts about the Pokemon hobby. So today, tackling a topic that's been all the rage uh, lately, and it is the entrance of CGC to the Pokemon and sort of trading card uh, grading marketplace. Uh, so for the longest time, we've had PSA and BGS. They've been the biggest uh, card graders, the most reputable card graders. Uh, you've had smaller companies, SGC, seeing a couple more SGC graded cards these days, but nothing on the lines of PSA and BGS. Uh, there are some smaller companies like GMA, uh, which really make no dent whatsoever because their grading standards are so bad and their authentication is so bad uh, that, you know, buying one of those cards is, is not even worth it. Um, but CGC, they've got, they're a huge comics grading company, they've got divisions, they've got coin divisions, they've got all sorts of... They are a big company that's putting a big investment into trading card grading. Uh, and they're the most significant competitor to PSA and BGS in, that, that I've ever seen. Um, so today we're going to go over uh, sort of my thoughts about CGC entering the trading card uh, hobby, grading hobby, uh, what, I think their, what I think their future is going to be, uh, and just some general thoughts on what I've heard so far. Uh, now, I do want to say that the most important thing about this is going to be CGC's grading standards, whether they're accurate, whether they're consistent, and whether they're fair. We haven't seen that yet. We don't have enough information about CGC graded cards to make that determination. Uh, but we do know some things. We know their grading scale. Uh, we've seen some copies of graded cards, and we know what they're grading and sort of relatively how they're going to go about grading it. Uh, so those are what I'm going to be commenting on today. Obviously, it's going to be difficult to project stuff like CGC's future role in the market, um, as that's going to be influenced by things like their grading harshness and accuracy and fairness and, and consistency and so forth. Um, but we're just going to go with what we have so far. Uh, so I'm going to split this up into like two sections. One, we're going to talk about the good. The other, we're going to talk about the bad. Uh, so I figure let's start off with the good. What's great about CGC entering the trading card hobby? Uh, so the first thing is competition. Um, it's been PSA and BGS at the top of the ladder for the longest time. And PSA has just run away with the trading card, the Pokemon grading uh, share of the market. The vast majority of graded Pokemon cards go through PSA. Uh, there are some that go through BGS, but those are much more niche cards. Uh, BGS grading has actually increased recently, uh, and a lot of that aspect is that people are starting to figure out that the discrepancy between PSA 9s and PSA 10s is, is fairly high, and people want to cross BGS 9.5s to PSA uh, 10s uh, because they both say Gem Mint, not really realizing that they're two different grading scales. A BGS Gem Mint does not mean a PSA Gem Mint, um, and that's a whole other video. Uh, so BGS has started to develop a, a more significant niche, especially with the black labels. We saw the Charizard 10K uh, sale, which has gone down the tank recently. Uh, but it's... PSA and BGS have been, the, been there for the longest time. Uh, PSA sort of taking the lion's share of the market. Uh, but as I, I did a whole video on problems with PSA and, and Pokemon cards, PSA is not infallible. Uh, they have some significant major issues uh, in their Pokemon trading card grading. Uh, and there's we haven't really seen a lot of improvement. The turnaround times have been an issue for years. They're getting worse. Uh, the autograph authentication, again, been an issue, not getting, not getting better. Uh, PSA not acknowledging the Pokemon card hobby, not giving it the, uh, just not giving it the attention that it deserves. That's been an issue for a long time. Uh, and increasing the competition, just having CGC in the market is, is good for everything, no matter whether they, you know, blast off and take a huge market share or whether they don't do as well as some people are expecting, it's still going to be great to just have them there as an alternative, uh, as an alternative grading company to, you know, use their services if you so choose. And what I hope happens is that regardless of what happens with CGC, uh, 
that they influence PSA and BGS, PSA especially, to adopt some more uh, hobby-friendly practices, whether that's hiring people uh, that know more about Pokemon, whether that's uh, decreasing the turnaround times. Uh, I just hope that competition does good things, and I think it will. Uh, the second great thing about CGC, one of the things that's really, uh, really impressed me as a Pokemon card collector, is that they've committed to the Pokemon trading card game right off the bat, and they've built their grading around that. And I cannot understate enough, I, I cannot state enough how important that is. Uh, so they hired my good friend Charlie, uh, Charlie Collects on Instagram. Uh, he's been in the hobby for an incredibly long time. He's a very knowledgeable uh, person. He's a US director for Ludkins. He's who I get my, all my cards graded through. Uh, CGC has hired him to be their senior Pokemon consultant, uh, and I know that he's had a good amount of input into how they, how CGC does all of their Pokemon card grading there, uh, what they recognize, what they accept, what they'll grade, what cards they'll acknowledge. Uh, and this is great because we're seeing CGC acknowledge things like Base Set 2000, which PSA won't. We'll see them take things like the no rarities that I even mentioned in my last video. We'll see them grade error cards, grade legitimate error cards, and hopefully not grade illegitimate error cards like, you know, sun faded stuff. Uh, so that's huge. The fact that CGC is listening to the Pokemon hobby right off the bat, paying someone who knows what they're talking about to provide input. Uh, that's essential and that's something we haven't seen with PSA and, and not really with BGS either. Uh, so that's, that's a huge plus on CGC's side. Uh, I think that's the biggest plus that's out there. Uh, another plus that I think with CGC is the way that they've modeled their service so far. Uh, their prices are competitive. They are basically around the same as PSA and BGS. I think bulk is about $8 a card. Uh, in economy, you're looking at around $13 to $15. Uh, so the prices are comparable to PSA and BGS, but their turnaround times are much faster. Uh, so CGC, I think their bulk turnaround time is something like 30 days, uh, which is lightning fast compared to PSA. You're looking at 100 business days plus. Uh, so it's less than one-third the turnaround time of PSA right now, uh, and that's huge. Now, some people have said that they don't think that those turnaround times are important uh, because once CGC gets more cards, those turnaround times are going to increase. I highly doubt a company like CGC would put out a 30-day uh, turnaround time if they weren't immediately expecting to have that, you know, have the scalability for that turnaround time to remain steady no matter the amount of cards they get in. Uh, so that turnaround time is huge. Those are the main pluses that I see with CGC. Uh, obviously we're still waiting on a lot of stuff, we're still waiting on seeing the grades, what they're going to look like, are they going to be uh, sort of, it's a different grading scale so it's not really fair to compare it to one company or another. Uh, but like, are the numbers, are, is a CGC 9, how does that compare to a PSA 9? How does that compare to a BGS 9? Uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see that, and again, that's going to be a very important part of determining where CGC goes in the future. Uh, but they've got a lot of good stuff going for them. They've, you know, hired Pokemon card experts, they've committed to low turnaround times, the prices are competitive, they're grading cards that PSA won't. Um, and it's, it's looking really good. I've, I've heard a lot of positive reaction from people in the Pokemon card hobby. But where there's good, there's also bad. Uh, so let's get into the bad stuff about CGC. Uh, a lot of this stuff isn't necessarily bad. It's, you know, taste, stuff that I personally dislike, stuff I think they could do better. Uh, and also just the difficulty of getting into this market at this time. Uh, so the first thing that I think is not very good about CGC is the grading scale. Uh, from the few cards that I've seen, we're getting a lot of 0.5 grades. Uh, there's, you know, Gem Mint, like BGS, is 9.5. You've got Pristine 10, uh, Mint 9, just stuff like that. Uh, so seeing that, like, 0.5 scales, 
I'm really not a fan of that. I don't like that for my collection. I prefer to have a uniform number of cards or a uniform grade on my cards. Whether I'm, you know, collecting PSA 9 EXs, PSA 10 EXs, uh, PSA 10 Japanese EX. That was my, you know, graded Gem Mint 10, perfect, can't go higher, uh, can't, or could go lower, but, you know, uh, that full set all in that 10 grade was really important to me. And doing something like that with CGC is going to be very difficult because they've got the 9.5, the 9, the 10 uh, grade. And from my understanding, the 9.5 is going to translate much more similarly to a PSA 10 than a PSA 9. Uh, now again, we haven't seen these, so I can't be too sure, but that's just sort of what I've seen so far from the few graded cards. Um, so I think this is going to be difficult for a lot of reasons. You know, other collectors feel the exact same way I do. You know, PSA 10 T17, that's a probably, what, a $15,000 card right now? And it's a $15,000 card because people want that Gem Mint 10 set. Uh, so it's all about getting those cards in that uniform grade. And that's going to be a lot harder with, with CGC. You know, getting a 9, 9, 5, 10 first edition base set, that's just going to be weird. It's not going to work. Uh, a PSA 10 set, you know, that's been the standard, you know, $100,000 plus for quite a while. Um, so having that grading scale makes it a bit difficult to do things that collectors want to do, like putting together sets. Uh, so that's one of the things that I'm not really 100% on CGC for. Um, another thing that I'm not really 100% on CGC for is, you know, where they, making this entry to the Pokemon grading market when it's already as established as it is. And when it, I established as it is, I mean this. Here's one of my boxes. Uh, this is my PSA 10 Complete Japanese EX set. And as you can see, it is all PSA. Uh, so every single one of these cards is PSA graded. Uh, and that's been the standard for the longest time. And a lot of collectors, they've got the same thing. They've got PSA graded sets. The vast majority of my cards are PSA. And right now, I don't see any major incentive to stop grading with PSA and exclusively move over to CGC. What I'm planning on doing now is submitting a couple cards to CGC, maybe about a tenth of the number that I submit to PSA, and seeing what the service is like. Um, I'm going to be using CGC for you know grading cards that PSA won't grade. I'm going to be using CGC for grading error cards, the stuff that they do that PSA won't. But am I going to be using CGC for my, you know, gem mint condition sets? Probably not. Uh, just because of those issues that I mentioned earlier, where it's the grading scale is different. Uh, it's moving against the inertia of the hobby. Now, this is not impossible for CGC to overcome, uh, you know, it's sort of a paradox to say that they're getting in late where, you know, they're getting, getting in now is better than getting in tomorrow. It's better than getting in in six months. You know, there's never a, you know, the best time to get into the hobby was yesterday. That's sort of the, the saying that goes around. Uh, but I think it's going to be difficult for CGC to break in when PSA grading is already so established and, and has really become the standard. Uh, in the Pokemon card hobby. You know, the, the prices are for PSA 10s. BGS has a little bit of a niche here. Uh, but PSA has long been the standard. I think it's going to continue to be the standard. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what CGC does, but I'm not really sure if they're going to be able to move against that inertia of the hobby, which is clearly with PSA. Um, but what remains to be seen is whether offering a better product at better turnaround times and better service is going to, you know, make that change a lot easier. Uh, so this gets us into where do I see CGC going? Uh, again, this is fairly difficult because we're so in the early phase. You know, a lot of people are saying CGC tanking, going to fail. They don't offer enough beyond PSA. Uh, some other people saying CGC going to do everything right, they're going to skyrocket, they're going to take a big portion of, of PSA's market share. Uh, 
Where do I see it? I see it somewhere in the middle. Uh, CGC is a company with a significant amount of resources. They are fully committed to this. And I don't think, they're the first grading company that I've even considered submitting cards to other than PSA. So already that, you know, speaks to how much I think that they're, you know, going to be developing and uh, providing a successful product. Uh, but I don't think that CGC is going to over, it's definitely not going to overtake PSA. You know, I don't want to talk percentages, but I think it's going to, you know, take enough of PSA's market share and BGS's market share that they're going to notice. Uh, but I don't think it's going to threaten PSA at the top bar something, you know, completely ridiculous like PSA closing down as a result of, of some trimming lawsuit or something. Um, but overall, CGC so far looks like it's hitting all of the pluses. It's providing a good product that's, you know, objectively right now providing a better service than PSA and BGS. Uh, they're uh, paying attention to the Pokemon card hobby. There are the negatives of market inertia and the grading scale, some stuff that people, you know, may not, uh, may not be 100% on. But, you know, CGC is making the right moves that you want to do. They're putting themselves in the best position to make an entrance into this market. Uh, so I'm really excited to see where we go with CGC graded cars. I'm going to be submitting some probably in the next month or so. You'll catch that video on the channel. Um, so yeah, let me know your thoughts on CGC in the comments section below. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and stick around for more videos.